Welcome back to Wages and Employment at Wilfrid Laurier University. Today, we're going to look at competitive labor markets. For reference, you should pair this video with readings in chapter seven of your textbook. In earlier chapters, we worked out the labor demand for firms and we derived their labor demand curve. For a competitive firm, this represented points where the value of the marginal product of labor was equal to the wage rate offered. They would go to the competitive labor market and see what the competitive wage, WC, is, and, for example, hire N1 units of labor. A second firm might have a different curve. If this were monopoly, this would represent points where the marginal revenue product of the firm is equal to the wage rate. But just like the first firm, they will see what the competitive market wage rate is and choose how much labor to hire. You can imagine there is a large number of firms participating in this market. So that the total demand for labor or the market demand curve is found by simply adding up the demand curves of each of the firms. But where did this competitive wage come from? In chapter two, we mapped out how individuals choose labor supply to maximize their own utility. And as long as substitution effects dominated income effects associated with higher wages, they would have an individual labor supply schedule that was upward sloping. We can map those individual choices into a market supply curve, representing the optimal amounts of labor supplied for each possible wage rate. The market wage, WC, is our market clearing wage, where labor demand is equal to labor supply. This very simple model can be helpful for thinking about simple policy changes. For example, we could map out what the demand and supply functions look like and see how payroll taxes matter. Here, we can use linear functions to characterize supply and demand, noticing that B must be something less than zero, while F is positive. By setting supply and demand equal to each other, we can solve for an optimal wage rate and employment. But then we might introduce a payroll tax of size T, paid for by employers for each unit of labor they employ. When we work out the new wages in the market, we'll see that the market wages will change so that employers reduce the amount they pay workers in response to the payroll tax. One thing to notice while you work through these problems is that the incidence of the tax in terms of workers receiving lower wages or firms having a higher unit cost for labor, it does not depend on who is responsible for paying the tax to government. If instead of having firms submit the tax, you ask workers to send it in after getting their paycheck, it has the same effect on employment and ultimately the take home pay for workers. In our next video, we're going to consider the case where labor markets are not competitive. In particular, we will consider the case of the monopsony. See you then.